Only one year before the Battle of Yavin, the greatest threat to the authority of Emperor Palpatine came not from the growing rebellion that looked to end his rule, but from within the Empire's own ranks. Several high-ranking members within the Imperial Order looked to take power for themselves, planning a coup to overthrow the Empire's two Sith leaders, Emperor Palpatine and Darth Vader. As we'll see, although the conspiracy would unravel due to the ambitions of its creators themselves, Sidious nevertheless also unleashed his own wrath against the traitors, ensuring that his rule was secured. In this video expose, I will describe the plot that was planned to assassinate the Emperor, and describe how Palpatine chose not to hide his true powers from the pathetic would-be usurpers. The assassination actually began almost a decade earlier, originating with Grand Moff Tracta, who wished to secure power for himself. And Tracta had the patience necessary to give himself the greatest chance for success. Eleven years before the Battle of Yavin, the Grand Moff ordered the creation of 100 clone stormtroopers, who were genetically modified to be absolutely loyal to Tracta. As the clones were grown and trained over the next 10 years, Tracta would work to recruit more Imperials to his cause. Among these recruits was fellow Grand Moff Bardem, General Skosef, Admiral Desetes, an Imperial assassin and agent named Gower, and finally, Moff Kadir, who was the commander of the Coruscant security forces, and frustrated at the loss of so many of his men to Grand Moff Tarkin. After 10 years of planning and all of his needed allies in place, Tracta would receive word that his detachment of specially cloned stormtroopers was ready. The training of these stormtroopers fell to an additional ally of the Grand Moth, Officer Carson. Proud of his success, Carson presented his clones to Tracta. To test the loyalty of these stormtroopers, and also to remove a witness to their treachery, Tracta ordered the clones to turn upon Carson and execute the Imperial officer, an action they executed without hesitation. The completion of the clones coincided with the perfect opportunity to put the grand conspiracy in motion. Learning that Vader was being sent to the inner rim planet of Darguli to investigate rumors of a Jedi present there, Grand Moff Tracta and the conspirators decided that with both Sith divided, now was the time to execute their plan. But they also knew that 100 stormtroopers weren't enough to overthrow Coruscant. Worried about the Emperor's royal guard and loyal stormtroopers, a first stage had to be executed, one that would eliminate these threats. And Tracta knew just how to execute this first strike. Knowing that Palpatine would soon be visiting Tarkin and the Death Star, the conspirators plotted to target not Palpatine himself, but those willing to risk their life to protect him. Under the watchful eye of General Skosef, the conspirators were able to successfully plant a bomb on the shuttle prepared to escort the Emperor to the Death Star. While they fully planned that Palpatine himself would sense the attack and refuse to board the shuttle, the bomb was detonated before warning could be given to the others. In one single act, Tracta had achieved a crucial component to his success. Not only did he remove a large number of Palpatine's most skilled and loyal protectors, but he now also had the pretext to offer his own stormtroopers, genetically altered to serve him, to augment the forces of the Imperial Palace. With Vader still away from Coruscant, and their own men now in positions closest to Palpatine, the conspirators thought that the final stage of the plan should be orchestrated, granting them control of the Empire. But unfortunately for these traitors, the greatest threat to their success was themselves, as they began to turn on each other before the final stage could be carried out. While Grand Moff Bardem and the assassin Gower had an alliance to remove Tracta from the picture, it would actually be the latter who would strike first. Falsely informing Skosef that the bomb had been traced back to him, Tracta recruited the general to begin eliminating witnesses to their scheme, beginning with Grand Moff Bardem. The general would do exactly that. Having secretly entered Bardem's apartment, Skosef shot the unsuspecting Grand Moff from close range, killing him instantly. But in turn, Skosef would also be executed by one of Bardem's own stormtroopers, thereby eliminating two of the witnesses to Tracta's conspiracy. Everything seemed to be going Tracta's way. Having planned to eliminate the other conspirators that were part of the plot, he also expected the others to come for him. And he was correct in preparing for such an event. When an assassin droid attempted to attack Tracta, the Grand Moff was ready, and turned to shoot the unseen threat. However, as he went to investigate further, Tracta was ambushed by Gower, who having surprised the Grand Moff, was able to shoot and kill the mastermind of the plot. 
Tracta was unprepared for the attempt on his life, as he had always suspected that Grand Moff Bardem would be the true threat. Only Tracta had guessed wrong, never noticing that Moff Kadir was the one he should have been worried about. By the end of the power struggles between the original planners, only Moff Kadir and Gower remained, and it would be these two who would attempt to orchestrate the final stage of the plan and seize control of the Empire from Palpatine. In possession of the clone stormtroopers originally belonging to Tracta, Kadir and Gower marched into the Imperial Palace, but they were resisted by two Imperial officers who refused to let them pass. Recognizing that they could never be recruited to their effort, the two officers were killed just outside of the Emperor's throne room. With no one left to stop them, the conspirators entered the throne room to confront Palpatine, with control of the Empire finally within their grasp. Or so they thought. As they entered the throne room, they found Palpatine was waiting for them, and with no fear whatsoever, greeted them with a simple at last. At that point, several Imperial Guards sprung their trap, leaping out from behind their hiding places and began to cut down the stormtroopers. Immediately recognizing that the plot was a failure, Gower turned and fled from the palace, abandoning his ally. Kadir would not be so lucky. As rage and fury built up within Palpatine, the Emperor unleashed a deadly barrage of force lightning across the throne room, instantly eradicating all of the remaining stormtroopers who attempted to overthrow him. Soon, only Moff Kadir would be left alive, and after Palpatine easily blocked the blaster bolt that represented the final effort to take his throne, the Emperor unleashed another wave of Force Lightning. Surprising the Imperial Moff, Palpatine actually thanked him for his failed plot, allowing a great service to be fulfilled in removing the traitors from the Empire. But Palpatine also taunted Kadir for his stupidity, in that he actually believed he could be successful. Although Kadir attempted to show that he had proven himself and could become a worthy apprentice, Palpatine showed the conspirator that he already had an apprentice, one who could not be replaced. And with that, Palpatine again unleashed Force Lightning upon Kadir, this time killing them off and officially ending the conspiracy. So there we have it, the failed conspiracy that attempted to overthrow Palpatine one year before the Battle of Yavin. We love making these videos, so why not subscribe for more fun Star Wars theories and discussions. Also, if you enjoyed the video, think about giving a like or leaving a comment. Or perhaps follow us on Twitter, at SWReadingClub, for updates regarding the channel. Or support the channel through Patreon, for access to exclusive rewards and discussions. If not for me... For Hydration.